Miguel, I don't, I won't speak on your behalf for uh, what La Terminal is or does. So if you want to give us a little bit of uh, an idea of what it, what it is, and then I'm going to have some questions for you. Yeah, well, La Terminal is my, uh, is my take on a terminal emulator for iOS. I have been fascinated with terminals for a very, very long time. Uh, had a couple of runs with the terminal world and built a number of them over the years. Um, and you know, just as just as we were thinking in the 2000s that uh, terminals were going to go away like dinosaurs, and uh, they were never going to be back with us. And I even, uh, you know, I spent years working on desktop environments. Uh, it turns out that I never left. I never left the command line. I still use the command line every day. It is still my main way of interacting with the computer. And then the cloud happened and everybody's back at the terminal. So, um, so I decided to build my own version, you know, my own take of a terminal emulator for, uh, for iPads and, and iPhones. So, so that's what the terminal is. Very curious about why you chose um, mobile devices. To clarify, is it iOS specific? It is very or iOS specific, yes. So what, what made you choose iOS as your platform of choice? So I first built an emulator in C Sharp um, called XRM Sharp. And uh, the idea is to decouple, right, the UI from the engine so that you could have multiple engines. Uh, so I had one for iOS, I had one for the Mac, I had a terminal emulator for terminals, right? So you could run full terminals inside terminals. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then I, I was learning Swift, uh, the, the Apple's programming language, and I decided to port my uh, terminal emulator. So that is, I would say that's probably the main reason why the uh, terminal is bound to iOS. It was a learning exercise for me at some point. I'm very curious what you use La Terminal for. So you, you mentioned you do a lot on the command line. So very, very curious when you're on the go, what is it that makes you reach for it? Oh, well, I, uh, so the other thing that I use a lot, I, I don't know if you use it or your users use it, but I use a lot tail scale. And, oh yeah, uh, it's great. So essentially what it lets me do is it lets me connect to all my machines at home. And I have a bunch of those here. Uh, so, um, you know, I have all my files, all my data, my Git checkouts, my personal life, of, of, you know, finances still managed in the command line. And uh, so I get to access all of that data while I'm on the road. And the tail scale in particular is nice because it doesn't matter where I am, I can always reach back home, right? Yeah. So I can always set up my infrastructure. You know, I always have it running. And uh, whenever I am, I can, you know, I can come back and I don't need to punch holes through in the firewall. I don't, you know, none of that messy business. Curious. So do you actually do any, mm -hmm. any kind of development and stuff like that on your phone or your tablet now that you have that terminal set up? No, I, I do very little development on them. So right now, most of the development that I do, I mostly do it with Swift. So I do it in okay. Xcode. It's difficult yeah. to do that without an IDE. Um, I am still an Emacs user. So yeah. whenever I write C sharp or C, I still use Emacs and, and I can certainly use it in the terminal, but I would say for the past seven months or so, I mostly write Swift uh, with rare exceptions. So I don't do a lot of development right now with my own app. Maybe that will change uh, if I have to maintain the website, but <laughs> in the meantime, in the meantime, I mostly do development on Xcode. Even if you can do this a Swift on the iPad, uh, you know, I, I just do it on, on the Mac. Very curious. So you're obviously, mm -hmm. you're quite an experienced developer. I'm wondering if there was anything that kind of stumped you on this project that, that was challenging for you that you like learned from and that you'd want to share those insights with people. I mean, I, I think it's like what everybody says, right? That 90% of the work is done in 90% of the time. And the remaining 10% of the work is done in the other 90% of the time, right? So <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's the last mile, is the last mile that is always the hardest. And, uh, and it's difficult. I would say it's, it's always been difficult for me to anticipate what that is going to be. Right. right. Um, there's a lot that you can plan. There's a lot that, you know, you need to do. Um, uh, but you know, just before you ship, there's, you know, I think I wanted to ship the app 
uh, sometime in June and, and it's just, oh, I just need to fix this other thing. I just need to do this other, other little bit or maybe the website needs to have this or the contact form or the, you know, all of these things add up. And the other piece is that regardless of your great well intentions, as soon as you ship the software and it falls in the hands of developers or real users, <laughs> you get treated to a dose of reality, right? So yeah. your software breaks in assorted ways that you didn't anticipate or, you know, you're holding it wrong. And so <laughs> one of the reasons I haven't really advertised or promoted the terminal too much so far is because I want to make sure that I fix all these bugs in this first wave of users, yeah. right? So I'm trying to get all of the kinks sorted out and I think it's getting close to close to done but i'm definitely focusing on these early users and making sure that that they don't run into more problems because you know promoting this and then just getting a hundred times people with the same problem or the same issues is is not a recipe for for happy users no. so so i am a, so i'm I, i'm very consciously being very quiet and very calm about promoting this thing and and hopefully I can deliver an experience that is, uh, you know, pleasant for users and meets their expectations. Um, very curious. Is there anything that you, uh, that's still kind of in the pipeline that you wish that if you could just wave a magic wand and not have to worry about any of the logistics or whatever, are there any features that you would really want your app to have without having to worry about the technical implementation of it? Oh, well, if I, I mean, I have a long laundry list of stuff that I would like to do. I think that there's a lot of things that can be done with notifications on iOS. Mm -hmm. There is in particular this super neat thing, which is tricky to use, very tricky to use, like everything Apple does, um, <laughs> because they're trying to preserve battery, right? Um, yeah. This is called live updates, right? So it is a new thing that they just launched um, that you can use to keep people updated. So I'm trying to weave this into the software and, uh, and it is complicated, right? Because I think at the end of the day, you want to have some command line tools on the server or something like that, that allows people to, uh, push updates, not, not like an SMS, not, not like a message that pops up, but rather kind of a progress indicator. Like if you start a build, you probably would like to keep a log of, hey, your build is, uh, you know, it's going fine or these are the problems that it's encountering as it goes through, right? So yeah. I would like to do this if I could. Um, it's just, it's just as usual, it's the technology itself is not very complicated. There's the social component of it and, you know, deploying the pipeline component of it that is, that is a little bit more cumbersome. So right. I would like to get to do that, but it's one of those things where it's not just the software that needs to be built. It's, it's an ecosystem and a bunch of little pieces that need to be done. Last question will be, uh, what are your favorite things about the command line or your favorite thing? I would say command R for searching back in history. So oh, yeah, incremental history. reverse search. Yeah. I don't know if people are using it, but it's the same one that you use in Emacs. Uh, so if, if there's one thing that you can learn about the command line, con command R, no, it's control R. R. Or control. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, at least in my day, I think that what changed my life was a book called Unix for the Impatient uh, that I read some 20 years ago. It has a bunny on the cover. It's a fantastic book. Um, and it has all kinds of ticks and trips to be more effective in the, in the, in the command line. So that's a good one. And then O'Reilly published another one that is an encyclopedia. It's like a thick, thick book. Yeah. Uh, Unix power tools, I think it was called. I don't know if they updated it. Uh, but I remember that, you know, uh, when it first came out, I would just flip through the pages and it's like, oh, you can do this. Oh my God, this is amazing. So I still use some of the tricks that I learned from that book. Yeah. Um, it was a book that was put together by a bunch of Unix people and every Unix person kind of donated their tips, right? So it was like, you know, 30 or 40 famous Unix people saying, this is how I do my, you know, my, my networking, or this is how I, you know, clean up my home directory. So yeah. anyways, those are my two favorite books. Uh, so if you were to look for how to get 
uh, you know, how to learn more tricks in the command line, those would be my two suggestions.